Generation 4 reactors have been researched and developed for almost 20 years now and we might see first attempts to implement the technology in the current decade. These reactors promise to solve or significantly reduce various problems surrounding nuclear fission reactors. They would also be characterized by a more significant departure from currently used technology in contrast to the previous generation. Generation 3 reactors have been operating from 1996 onwards and for the most part use the same core concepts as the second generation reactors, but with increased safety due to being easier to operate, having stronger reinforcement and cont containment measures in a longer grace period. Fuel is used a bit more efficiently and the construction costs could be lowered. Also contributing to higher cost effectiveness is the increased capability of load following operation. Modern French EPR reactors, for example, can respond to changes in energy demand pretty quickly, making them better work alongside renewables. However, fast adjustments still put some strain on the reactors, which is one of the things seeking to be improved with the fourth generation of reactors. Overall, the goal for the future reactors can be summarized as follows. Low air contamination and efficient use of fissile material is supposed to contribute to a more sustainable use of resources. Minimizing waste and drastically reducing the decay heat and safekeeping period to up to maybe a thousand years ought to ensure environmental and human protection from harm through radioactivity, while maintaining an economically competitive way of producing energy. For example, by lowering the financial risk that comes with major accidents, by making them generally safer. For example, by downscaling the reactors. Another safety measure is on-site reprocessing of used fuel to minimize transport waste and thereby better protect weapon-grade material from being diverted away from peaceful use. In order to achieve these goals, most of the proposed concept consists of fast neutron reactors, because although fast neutrons are less likely to interact with the nuclides, they often have a higher chance of inducing efficient decay or transmutation into an instable nuclide in case they do interact with a nuclide. This is especially important when trying to break down plutonium and other actinides, allowing for an overall more efficient use of the energy potential in the fuel. The first of this kind is the gas-cooled fast reactor, whose coolant is helium. It operates at very high temperatures, with a coolant exit temperature of about 80, 850 degrees Celsius. As with the other fast reactors, fuel does not need to be enriched and there are a number of fissile materials that could serve as fuel, for example depleted uranium. The fuel would then be reprocessed and the actinides repeatedly recycled on site. This kind of reactor would be primarily used for electricity production and actinide management, as well as for hydrogen production. Difficulties arise when dealing with extreme heat and pressure, and a significant portion of the research is about materials that can withstand such conditions, as well as the fast neutron damage. Another problem is the high residual decay heat after shutdown of this reactor. Lead-cooled fast reactors are cooled by liquid metal at exit temperatures of 550 to 800 degrees Celsius. This reactor could be built in a various range of sizes, with the smaller ones offering a long core life of 10 to 20 years, making this an attractive option for countries with small energy demand and few resources due to the little maintenance required. As fuel, both the standard uranium metal fuel or uranium nitride fuel could be used. UN is a promising fuel option with a number of advantages over uranium metal oxides, such as UO2. Among other things, it has a higher fissile density, resulting in higher burn-up. The reprocessing is easy, since it can be dissolved in nitric acid. And it offers a longer fuel cycle of 18 to 25 years. It is, however, difficult to produce and it requires a O2-free atmosphere while handling. The fuel can then be recycled in regional or central facilities. The reactor's main purpose is generation of electricity, waste management and hydrogen production. The otherwise beneficial low maintenance characteristic could however result in safety risks and lead poses an environmental risk. Sodium cooled fast reactors built on many years of experience. They work with a lower temperature of 550 degrees Celsius and for fuel they could use either uranium-plutonium metals with actinides or standard enriched fuel. 
In the first case, they would be recycled on site in the second and central facilities. Its main purpose would be to eliminate highly radioactive waste and to generate electricity. Challenges with this reactor type include sodium's high reactivity in regards to water and air and difficult maintenance and reprocessing procedures. Supercritical water-cooled reactors make use of high pressure and temperature to benefit from the higher thermal efficiency of supercritical water. Their fuel consists of either enriched or natural uranium in the case of a fast reactor type, leading to an open cycle in the first case and a closed one with full actinide recycling in the second. Its main purpose is to produce cheap energy. This could mean that simplifications made to achieve cost reduction result in lowered safety. The open fuel cycle also wouldn't do much to tackle the waste problem. Fast reactors cooled with molten salt have their fuel dissolved in the salt. It can, for example, consist of natural uranium, actinides or thorium, given in or taken out of the salt during operation. There also is a thermal reactor type intending to use molten salt, but with en solid enriched fuel, which is similar to the reactor discussed next. The main purpose of the fast reactor is waste reduction, since the waste includes no actinides and is therefore shorter lived. It can also fulfill the purposes of reprocessing and separating radioactive waste, requires little fuel and results in small amounts of weapon grade material. Both the fast and the thermal type can produce hydrogen. Difficulties with these types are the usual ones for fast or thermal reactors respectively. The very high temperature gas reactor will be one with thermal neutrons, moderated by graphite and cooled with helium at an exit temperature of 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius. As fuel, it uses enriched uranium oxide encapsulated in prisms or pebbles, but there is no initial recycling capability as with fast reactors. However, it has the potential of very high burn-ups, passive safety, low operation and maintenance cost, and modular construction. Its main purpose would be hydrogen production, but electricity is also possible. The difficulties have to do with material that can withstand the very high temperatures and also with involuntary peaks in pressure and temperature. In regards to electricity production, it is also challenging to develop a fitting turbine for temperatures that high. Although these reactor technologies seem very promising and will hopefully enable the use of this low-carbon, affordable form of energy without much risks, the increased amount in circulated plutonium would nevertheless pose a significant risk to be aware of, and although closed fuel cycles take care of remaining uranium and plutonium in used fuel, there will probably still be some waste left to be taken care of long term. Due to some of its issues likely to remain, nuclear fission would probably best serve as a supporting mean of energy production, with the main form being renewables.